Welcome to lesson 1.3, part 2. In this lesson, we're going to talk about line of best fit and how to find one. So, line of best fit is sometimes called to a trend line, depending on the textbook, depending on what level of math you're using it. We usually see trend lines pop up in the area of mathematics called statistics. So, we do have some experience with that, and they're usually used to describe a set of data. And, and a line of best fit is that straight line that best represents the data that we see specifically on a scatter plot. So a bunch of dots, kind of like what we see down here at the bottom of the page, but various scatter plots. And we use a line of best fit to kind of like see which way the data is going. Like, do we think there's some relationship here that can be modeled by a linear equation? meaning it has a constant rate of change, a rate of change that is the same um, from one given value to the next. And sometimes when we create this line, sometimes that line passes through points. It can, doesn't really have to. It doesn't have to really pass through any of the points. Or if it's perfectly straight, it could actually pass through all of the points. And we can calculate the line of best fit using Desmos. That's really my favorite way to do it. We could do it by graphing calculator. Excel has a really nice feature. Or we can even do it by hand. When we do that, we're going to see one of three different things happen. We're going to see a linear, a positive linear correlation, a negative linear correlation, or no correlation at all. And we get these terms by the positive linear correlation by saying, hey, that almost looks like a straight line could go right through it, right? So that has a positive slope. That line has a positive slope, and it is linear, as opposed to the second one, which is a negative linear correlation, which, again, looks like my data goes downward. So it has a negative correlation or a negative slope to that line, and therefore negative correlation. Or this third one, no correlation at all. Like, I can't figure out how to even draw a line there. It just doesn't seem like it fits. So this actually has no correlation at all to it. So we're going to focus on using Desmos for these problems to calculate the line of best fit, and I'll explain to you why later on. Um, but in this example, we're going to look to see if there's a relationship between the fat grams and the total calories in fast food. So here we have a data table that talks about the sandwich, talks about the total fat, and talks about uh, the total calories that are in said sandwich. So if you look at it, what we're going to do is we're going to first create um, a scatter plot in Desmos. And in order to do that, you have to be able to figure out how to, how to input a table. So I would encourage you to use Desmos as we're going through this problem. So um, in order to add a data table to our graph, um, on Desmos, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, there's this little plus sign. And, well, okay, so it didn't come up here, but you'll see something that will talk about having a function here or a note. You'll see that symbol. And then you'll see a symbol down here at the bottom that looks like this. And that is the table feature. And that's actually what we want to select. Um, that was supposed to be a little video that showed, and it didn't work. So you want to create a table first. This is going to allow you to be able to take these data points and enter them in in Desmos. So before you go any further, I'd like you to pause the video right now. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take this data table. Okay, we don't need the first column, but just these numbers. And I'd like you to take these numbers and I'd like you to enter them into a table in Desmos. We're going to do something with that and I want you to have that in front of you so you can take a look at it before you go any further. So pause the video right now, take a look at this. Uh, before we go any further, um, and, and then I'll explain why here soon. Go ahead, pause the video. Really, type this into Desmos. I'll be here when you get back. So here's a little bit of what your data table probably looks like in Desmos. I don't know if the color's going to be the same, but that really doesn't matter. Your numbers should be the same. And if you noticed, it looks like all of your values kind of got, like, scrunched up here. It's like all your numbers are right here. Um, we need to fix that. So in order to fix that, you're going to go over here in the right corner. You're going to hit the little little wrench. And that's going to open up all of these graph settings. And what we need to do is we need to actually change the values here for the x-axis. We want them to kind of, kind of stretch this out a little bit more. We don't need all these numbers over here. If you look at my values for, for the total grams of fat, my lowest value is 5. 
I want my biggest ones like I'm at 34. So there's no need for me to go all the way over here to 450. But for some reason, Desmos has done that. You maybe have a slightly different scale on yours, so you might not be quite as bad, but I just wanted to show you how to fix this anyways. So we're going to set that x-axis to look like something a little bit different. So I want that the values for the x-axis to go from 0 to 40. Okay, If you wanted to count by 1s, that's actually not a bad idea, but it doesn't really. you don't really need to worry about that part. And then once you do that, your graph a little bit uh, look like this and, and see how it's really nice see how your data points are are spread across they're spread across now a lot better and we can actually almost almost take this and see that these numbers do in fact have a positive correlation right now now this line uh, just just hold on for just a second about that line we'll get more to that here in a second but you can see that this does in fact have a positive correlation and that's really important moving forward. So after I observed this what I did was I typed this magical equation into Desmos and it actually drew the line of best fit for me, the perfect line of best fit because when I drew this line here on the red in red I'm just eyeballing it right there's not really much that I'm doing I'm just kind of ensuring that I'm kind of splitting the difference between all the points so you'll see about half my points are above the line about half my points are below the line and I'm generally following the direction of the data. But here's what Desmos actually comes up with as the perfect line. Hey, I didn't do too bad. That's actually pretty close to what my line looked like, isn't it? So we're just going to be mindful of this. And to come up with that line of best fit, right, Desmos will do all the work for you. This is the magic equation right here that's going to allow you to come up with the line of best fit. Notice, just like we talked about in the last section, y equals mx plus b? Well, you'll see, I've just replaced a couple things. First of all, I made it y sub 1, and I made it x sub 1. The m is the same, the b is the same. And look here, though, this is the key. I'm not using an equal sign. Instead, I'm using the tilde key. That's that little funny button that you have that's right beside the 1. So if you hit shift, and then that button that's to the left of the 1, you're going to get that what's called a tilde. Okay? And what's even cooler is the fact that Desmos right down here tells you the values for B and for M that are going to fit my line that's going to be for this line right here. So if I use these values for M and for B, I can come up with my equation of that line, which is 11, uh, y equals 11.7313x plus 193.852. That is the equation of this line of best fit. And Desmos did all of the work for us. We didn't have to do any of that by hand. It's magical. And we can use that line of best fit to answer this problem. Can we use our line to predict how many calories the new McDonald's spicy chicken nuggets, given that they have 27 grams of fat? Can we tell how many calories that is? The answer is yes. We're going to use that equation from the previous slide. And using this equation, we just have to remember that x is the total fat and y is the number of calories or the total calories. So if we remember that, and again, how do I know that? I know that because this was the first column. Total, total fat was the first column and calories was the second column. So they match up with x and y that way. So when I'm given this piece of information, the 27 grams of fat I'm going to take that 27 and I'm going to fill it in for the total grams of fat in my equation, which is the x. And I'm going to just figure out and evaluate this and figure out what the answer is after I plug it in. Hold on a minute. Let me finish writing this out. And then I'm going to have to use my handy dandy calculator to come up with the answer. And when I use my calculator, I'm going to come up with 510.5971. And again, that would be calories. So that's how many calories I'm estimating the new spicy chicken nuggets to have. Now I did tell you there was a way to do this by hand, but it's a little bit more clunky, but I'm going to show you anyways. So the first thing you have to do is you have to draw that line of best fit in. I'm going to do my best to draw in this line of best fit. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to doing what we were doing in the last lesson using the equation y equals mx plus b. 
And if you remember, what we had to do was we had to identify points that we could use to create our line. So I'm going to use these two points right here. One that's not actually from the data table, but is pretty a nice point that my line goes through. And that's 5,250. Five, and the other point is this guy up here, this point right here, which is really close. Now, it doesn't, my line didn't perfectly go through that, but close enough. And that's the point 31,560. So those are the two points I'm going to use to come up with the equation of my line. And again, just like I did in the last lesson, I'm going to first find the slope. So let's see here, m equals uh, 560 minus 250 over 31 minus 5. So that'll give me 310 over 26, which, if I do the math, comes up to 11.923 which is actually pretty, pretty close to what Desmos came up with. Desmos came up with 11.731. So I'm in the ballpark there. That's pretty cool. All right, so now to find the y-intercept. And to find the y-intercept, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in to my equation. So let's see here. So y equals m, which is 11.923x plus b. And I'll fill in one of my points for x and one of my points, uh, the uh, x, y value for one of my points. So I'll go with the uh, smaller number. So 250 equals 11.923 times 5 plus b. Okay. 11.923 times 5 ends up being 59.615 plus b on that side equals 250. And then if I subtract 59.615 from both sides, I come up with B being equal to 190.385. Okay, so I got my M, I got my B, I can write my equation. So Y equals 11.923X plus 190.385 which if you compare that to Desmos, is pretty darn close. Nice. Good job, Mr. Halp. You're the best. Why, thank you, Mr. Halp. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I'd like you to try this one. So I'd like you to do this two different ways. First of all, I'd like you to try to um, use the data table that's here, and I'd like you to find the equation of the line of best fit by using Desmos, and then sketching this out on a piece of graph paper. Um, plotting the points, seeing if you can come up with a line of best fit by hand. It's probably going to take you a while, so go ahead and pause the video now. I, I got nothing else to do. I'll just sit here and wait for you to go do that. So pause the video, take your time, do your best, and then uh, after you draw the scatter plot, right, you draw the scatter plot, you draw the line of best fit, I'd like you to figure out, is there a positive, negative, or no correlation at all to this? And then using your line, Tell me how many people would be in the pool if the temperature was 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video now, and we'll go over these answers here in a second. Okay, so I'm using Desmos here. And in Desmos, this was the table of values up here in the corner. I typed in my magic equation to come up with my answer down here. And here's my line of best fit with my equation there. So the actual equation for this line is y equals... 11.619x plus 54.93, and we'll round up the 7 there. So you, if you did this by hand, you should be pretty close to what Desmos is telling you. So you should be around this. You should be in the neighborhood of this equation with these numbers. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. You don't, don't expect to get that perfect, but, um, you know, just, just be close to that. The second question wanted to know how many people would be in the pool if the temperature was 40 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature right there. X represents temperature in this problem. So I'm going to plug 40 into that particular part of the equation. And I get uh, Y equals 11.619 times 40 plus 54.937. And I'll plug that into my calculator and I'll come up with 500 and 19.697. Now, it, remember, we're talking about people here. How many people will be in the pool? We can't have 0.697 of a person. So we would probably say about 520 people.
people would be in the pool. Alrighty, so that's all I got for you here. So make sure if you have any questions that you put them in the reflection form and let me know if there's anything else you need. Thanks for watching.